So hello guys and welcome to Steve Knows. I'm going to show you the latest update version 13 that just dropped for the Oculus Quest. This is on a rolling basis so you may not have it yet. So I've just got it. So I'm going to take you through all the new features that are in this update so you can see them for yourself because some are hidden and some are not that clear that you may not have noticed. There has been Oculus Link improvements and I'm going to show you if you're having issues with your Oculus Link what you probably need to do in order to get it to work with your computer now. There have been hand tracking improvements, welcomed ones. There have been new applications that have been added to the Oculus Quest and even more that I'm going to share with you. So guys if you're new to the channel please Please subscribe and if you've been here before and you're not subbed, do it again. There's a chance to win an Oculus Quest and how to do that is down below in the description. So let's get started and check out the new version 13 update. So first I'll show you what's different inside the Rift Home on the Oculus Link. So if you go to settings or double tap the home button, you can go to the Guardian setting and you can now change and adjust your Guardian from inside the Link without having to leave to change it on the quest and jump back in again. This is great, especially because of how temperamental it used to be. Once you left, you may not be able to get back in again. So now the quest features. Go to settings, then about, and it should tell you if you have an update pending or not. And if you do not, it should say version 13 right here, so you know that you've got the right version. So now if you go to experimental features and hand tracking, this has some additional features that you should enable. You may not see if hand tracking isn't enabled, so enable them both and we can move on. This is going to enable you to change between hand tracking and the controllers seamlessly. I'll put down the remotes and wave my hands. The quest will change the input. This is much more seamless than before and it takes a couple of seconds to register. Then if you pick up the remotes again, you will need to press a button for it to go back to the remote tracking. This is a welcomed improvement for sure, because now, if you want to watch Netflix or search the web, you don't need to grab your remotes, you can just grab the headset and chill. And another one that now removes so much stress from the experience is you now have an indicator that the Oculus Link is actually enabled and it can be activated from the navigation bar. You used to have to go to settings, see all, about, and then scroll to the bottom and select Oculus Link. That five step process is now one step. So now going back and forth between the homes is much less frustrating and I'm guilty of being annoyed myself. And also if you unplug the link, this indicator disappears. So you can now tell whether your headset is being registered by the Oculus app on your computer as well. There is also now an add-on for a tutorial that allows you to practice your hand tracking skills. It doesn't provide you any feedback on what you're doing, but it does provide you with a Rubik's Cube-like playground to play around with. So go to library, go to tutorials, select hand tracking, and click through the menus until you get to this grid screen. Here you can select tiles and drag them along, learning how to scroll horizontally and vertically. It's easier said than done, I see why they've added this, I was terrible at it. They've also added some performance improvements with the hand tracking, which I didn't really use enough to know the difference. So if you have, please let me know down below in the comments so I can get a better understanding of what's going on. But if you have been using it frequently and you can tell the difference, comment down below and let me know your thoughts. So next, if you're the kind of person that likes to check out events and be social in virtual reality, which is something I do less and less as I get older, well now you can go to the events page, select an event that you're interested in, and you can see also who has showed interest in this event out of your friends list. So then you can easily make plans with them and go and enjoy this event together. You can also now invite your friends to events that you're attending. But if you're embarrassed and you don't want your friends to see what you are up to, you can go to settings, privacy, and then change these options to only you for Quest Incognito. Another change that not everybody has as it's on a rolling basis is the search bar. It has some functionality changes and some small UI changes. I honestly couldn't remember what it used to look like, so I had to look at old footage so I can see the difference before. And previously, it was the same color as the background, unless hovered over. And it didn't have a magnifying glass next to it. Now it's bigger and it's bolder. It has a magnifying glass next to it. And it just, it looks a bit nicer. This isn't a massive, crazy improvement, just... It's bigger and more stylish. Now a big one is a default application that Oculus has added for the competitive and this is the Oculus scoreboard. This isn't available for everyone, it's on a rolling basis as well, but luckily I've got it to show you guys. So if you open the application it will show you all the titles that you've played and the achievements that you are yet to achieve or have achieved. You can select a friend on the right menu as well and compare your stats to each other. So there's Bullseye here and let's also check Eric, this guy loves football. There's also a leaderboard option where you can choose a game and see where you rank within your friends. This is much more seamless as you don't have to go in game and open up the game menus and the leaderboard to see where you stand. You can now do it from the home. It's a much more seamless 
experience and it looks great. The storage manager has also had some updates as well, a new UI update. So if you go to gallery system storage, you will see a new gradient background now with the ability to change the formatting of the UI, which I think is handy. I really am a sucker for a detailed view. There's no new environment changes though, which is kind of sad. And that's all about that's noteworthy here, apart from some bug fixes. But if you're someone who's having Oculus Link issues after the update, here's a few things for you to try. Open your Oculus app. You may have an update option there waiting. If you don't, plug in your Oculus Quest to enable the link and then check the app again to see if there is an update pending. Because I didn't have an update until I plugged in my Oculus headset. If that fails, you can also go to the settings and enable the public testing channel, reset the app, plug your headset in again, and try the same thing again. But this will put you on version 14, which may not work, so you may have to back out the public testing channel and try this again. If none of that works, please feel free to join the Discord for further assistance. We have a great community. You'll be welcomed with open arms. Well, that's it from me today, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the little tour around the version 13 update on the Oculus Quest. Hopefully now, when you do get the update, it's going to be a bit more obvious of what has been changed. So stick around for next time so you don't miss out on the latest and greatest virtual reality news. Happy gaming, guys. Good day.